I've had Sturge Weber course since I was born. I was reading a book the other day on uh, uh, my daughter-in-law's book, What to Do in Your First Year of Marriage, and it says there are probably five days that are the most important days of your life. The day that you're born, of course, the day that you get married, the day your first child is born, the day that you die. But when you really look at all the most important days of your life, they really come down to the days when your kids are born. You can't choose the day you're born. You surely don't look forward to the day you die. Mm -hmm. Most of us look forward to all the different days when we're going to get married. Some of us just <laughs> once. <laughs> we definitely all, if you picked one day, I mean, like I was saying to my son the other day, in the old days, you look forward to the day you got married, that was hopefully the day you lost your virginity. <laughs> Nowadays, that's not so certain. We all live with our significant others first. But we definitely look forward to the day that we have our kids. Nothing more important, perhaps, than the day we have our first kid. I've had three sons, all wonderful. My middle son is with me today, uh, still in the Marines, but he gets out in a month. And I can tell you, as a newborn, I delivered all three children, cut the cords for all three. I'm sure a lot of you in the room have had the same experiences. You look forward to that day. When one of us with Sturge Weber is born, we come out and we basically look perfect. When I came out, I came out and I had a black and blue mark here. And my mom looked and the doctor looked and he said, what's that all about? And my mom said, that's my fault. The doctor said, what do you mean? She says, well, my husband tied a rope to the back of the car. It was snowing. We pulled the sled. When he came to a stop sign, he had to stop, and I hit the back bumper, and my son got a black and blue nose. The doctor bought it. This was June 23. The snow was in January. I'm thinking, Doc, six months ago, you don't have a black and blue for six months. But I had it, and I had it for 32 years, never thought anything of it. Of course, uh, my face is a little bit purple. Not so bad as a lot of people with Sturge Weber. And so all my life, of course, I wanted to get it changed and altered. Never happened. Um, most people with Sturge Weber, when they're born, they have a larger stain. Mine is purple because I have a uh, arterial venous malformation type of Sturge Weber. A lot of people, maybe 80%, have capillary malformations. Those tend to be pinkish, reddish in nature. A lot of people, it comes right down the middle of the face and the whole side of one face. Some people are bilateral. The whole face will be covered. The top half of the face is covered. So when a baby's born with Sturge Weber, the only indication that something's wrong is a minor port wine stain. So the baby comes out, the parents think nothing wrong. Nowadays, doctors are better educated. When I was born, nobody knew the word Sturge Weber. There were maybe a hundred of us in the United States of America. Now we're having maybe several hundred children born a year. Now we have the internet. The doctors are on the internet. The neurosurgeons are on the internet. As soon as the baby's born with a port wine stain, especially if it covers the eye, the first thing the doctor says is, your baby might have seizures. Look for seizures. Your baby might have glaucoma. Let's get an ophthalmologist to do a glaucoma test. So the doctors tend to be on top of things right away now. Usually, if a doctor says your child has Sturge Weber, nowadays, the first thing that a mother or father do is, bam, they hit the internet. As soon as they hit the internet, the first thing they do is they find the Sturge Weber Foundation. Karen Ball, in particular. Karen founded a foundation in 1987. To me, it meant nothing in 1987. Uh, June 4th, 1987, was the first day I found out I had Sturge Weber syndrome. When I was born, I was born 1954, it was the old days. I came out, I had problems. The doctor didn't know what problems I had. They just figured, you got problems, kid, deal with it. But I had the uh, language development, the language delays, the motor skill delays, the delays of everything. Basically, in those days, people just say, hey, he's retarded. So not only was I retarded, but I was uh, what they called in those days physically challenged, basically immobile. So in those days, there was basically nothing that could be done for that circumstance. What the doctor didn't know was that I had a massive stroke that destroyed one quarter of the right side of my brain before I was born. So before I was born, I already had a stroke. So I came out already, stroke. First time I learned how to throw a football, I really learned how to throw a football. I say that because I've learned how to use this arm four times in the course of my lifetime. Three major strokes, 120 mini strokes. I've learned how to use this arm twice. So when you have Sturge Weber, you have major catastrophic problems, and that's just the way it is. 
So when I was born, my next door neighbor, Donnie, he and I would go out and we would throw the football so I could learn how to use my right arm. We would throw it, we would throw it, we would throw it. I mean, we would throw it 10 hours, 14 hours a day, day in, day out. Now Donnie, he was smart. We would take a little tire and swing it on the tree. You know, you get tired of playing catch five million times. But Donnie, he taught me how to use my right arm, taught me how to do everything. I never could learn how to run, but who cares? Everything but running, I could do. So he taught me how to throw that ball. I had the most straight throw. I could throw straighter than any human being on the planet. I could throw perfectly. Donnie, teaching me how to throw, he got even better. Grew up, threw footballs for a living. 16 years with the Dolphins. Donnie Strzok. Oh. One day I saw a video, and it had a tire swinging. And it said, Donnie Strzok won the straightest throwing arm for the NFL quarterbacks. I'm like, duh. <laughs> we couldn't throw that six million times. If I had been in the NFL, I would have beat Donnie Strzok. <laughs> so I outgrew all those childhood problems. I had a 800 on the Middle English SA, Advanced SAT test. The only human being in America with an 800 on the Middle English Shakespeare. <laughs> I, somehow, I, I guess I was born knowing Shakespeare and Chaucer. So uh, I outgrew all of the problems, went to law school, won. Although I couldn't speak when I was little and they thought I was retarded, I won the state debate championship in 12th grade. I won the first year law school moot court, the second year, the third court. Basically, one of those overachieving nerds. <laughs> My childhood heroes were people like Wilma Rudolph, Dr. James Cunningham. Cunningham, when he was little, seven, his legs were burned up. They wanted to amputate him. The doctor said, no, we won't let you amputate. I mean, the, the parents said, not going to let you. Your parents are always your greatest supporters. Won't let them amputate. He eventually, after five years, learned how to walk again. He eventually learned how to run. And he couldn't just learn how to run. He had to break the world's fastest mile at three minutes and 51 seconds to become the world's fastest human being. Wilma Rudolph, if you don't know who she was, one of the great American track stars, she had polio. Baby number 16 in a family of 22 kids in Tennessee, black. She had everything stacked against her. But she grew up, and what did she do? She set the gold medal standards, and she became one of America's all-time greatest athletes. You can overachieve, and sometimes that's what it takes, is a little bit of overachieving. When a baby's born with Sturge Weber, they have the port wine stain. Not all of us have it. Some babies come out perfectly clear, and yet they have Sturge Weber. Some of us come out with port wine and don't have Sturge Weber. Only 8% of all people on the planet that have port wine stain have Sturge Weber. Mikhail Gorbachev is the best known person with port wine stain. He's got it on the top of his head, does not have Sturge Weber. If you do have Sturge Weber, the first and most defining characteristic, put you on an x-ray, a CAT scan, an MRI, and that picture is going to tell the whole story, and it will tell the story in a nutshell. Soon as they look at your brain and they put it on a CAT scan, it's, it's obvious. This is an official textbook on Sturge Weber. It has railroad tracks on the brain. Soon as you see that, you know you've got major problems. First time I saw my CAT scan, the doctor said, you have six hours to live unless we operate. I looked at that CAT scan and I said, Yes, I believe that. As soon as you saw the cat scan, you knew you were dead. So he operated. Then he comes back and he says, good news is I took care of that AVM. He said, bad news is you have so many AVMs on the right side of your head and you have so much brain damage. He says, you could not possibly live six months. He says, almost 50% of people in your condition would live 50%. You're not one of them. He says, you got a few days, a few weeks, make out your will. I looked at him and I said, you know what, there's no way you're right. I said, I am so ornery a cuss. I said, two things in life are inevitable, death and taxes. I didn't pay my taxes. The government will find a way to keep me alive until I'm 200 years old. It's been working for 30 years. In addition to the brain damage, you can't see it. I have now about 50% of the brain here. This half the brain is basically flawless. That's what I operate on. I'm a left-sided guy. When they say men think left-sided, right-sided, I am a left-sided guy. 
this after brain, 25%, well, half of it, 25% of my whole brain was wiped out before I was born. Then I lost another portion of it. I've got 60% of my total brain. The first time any of us knew, any of us that are in the room today, that you could live with half a brain, well, my dad used to tease me about it, but that's another story, was James Brady. He got shot in the Ronald Reagan assassination attempt, I think about 81. And the doctor, uh, Arthur Cobrian, had to cut half his brain out. So when Cobrian operated on me, I woke up and I said, so what are the options? He said, well, I could take half your brain out. Well, he was world famous for taking half the brain out of James Brady. So I thought, if anybody could do it, he could do it. And he said, but you're too old. He says, take your chances. So I took my chances. I'm still alive. Most of us with Sturge Weber are pretty lucky that we can live a fairly normal life, go on about our business. But for probably 20% of all of us with Sturge Weber, the only option to stay alive is to remove half the brain. That's because for us, at least half the brain, if it's affected by Sturge Weber, 20% of us have AVMs, and they are littered throughout. They rupture, if you know what an AVM is, arterial venous malformation. It ruptures as an aneurysm and floods the brain with blood. You, you basically die from a bleeding brain. Other people that have different things, the uh, capillary malformations, have a, a low flow blood disorders, they have a different problem. They tend more to have seizures. There are 40 types of seizures, and with Sturge Weber, you don't know which of those 40 types you're going to get. You're going to get something, and it's not going to be good, generally speaking. But if you get the seizures, they have to be controlled with medicine. Sounds easy, but we have five different medicines. Sometimes kids are on all five. If the seizures cannot be controlled, then there's no choice. The doctor takes out half a brain. If both sides are affected, and both sides of the brain cause seizures, you can't take out the whole brain. You just have to live with it. Unfortunately, uh, if the seizures cannot be controlled, every time there's a seizure, there's brain damage that occurs from a seizure, no matter what type of seizure it is. So if your whole brain is affected and causing seizures, you're probably going to die from that if the doctors can't get it under control. There are some other symptoms of Sturge Weber, but really the port wine stain, the problem with the port wine stain is it gives you social stigma. That's it. Port wine stain in two-year-olds, five-year-olds, ten-year-olds, not a problem. At my age, most of us have severe problems because the port wine stain, the skin gets really thick, it gets nodule, and then these little things start to bleed, so you're just sitting there and something ruptures and bleeds. It's a little unpleasant, but the pain's not bad. Almost 80% of all of us get glaucoma. For some reason, I have two bad eyes with some malformations, but I can see with these glasses, 20-20. Uh, 80% of the people get glaucoma. If the port wine stain covers here, you get glaucoma in this eye. Covers this, you get glaucoma in both eyes. Glaucoma is just going to be a lifelong problem. If you can control the seizures, and if you can get by the strokes, then you just have the minor things. Your brain calcifies. Well, that's just the way it is with us. The brain calcifies, and when you see it on the, one of these little uh, MRIs, your brain's like got all these little things. You're like, do you have Alzheimer's? And it's like, no, it's the same thing almost. Your brain is calcified here, 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 here. But that happens. But that's not what causes the problem. That's a sign. That's a, the calcification means the brain has died there and the calcium sets in. The other thing is uh, we tend to have one side of the body is generally weaker, and that's... Uh, I, my Latin is not good, hemiparesis, you, you get paralyzed in one side or the other. And a lot of times it's not complete paralyzed, it's just a weakness in one side or the other. The first time that I met the Sturge Weber Foundation, I lived all my life and I thought, you know, I'm the only guy with a purple face in America. Because other than Gorbachev, I've never seen a port wine stain. This is years ago. So I went to the hospital, had a stroke, got out of there. Doctor told me I had Sturge Weber. I said, okay. So I thought, I'll never meet another human being with Sturge Weber. Years ago, I saw this episode of The Twilight Zone. I'm sure I want to tell this story. A lot of you who are old enough to remember The Twilight Zone when it first came out will know the story. I had this uh, episode, and I thought, this is my life. I had this lady, and she was going to have 
plastic surgery to fix her face. She was a nightmarish, ugly lady. She was just hideously ugly. So ugly that in this society, they had a funny farm for ugly people. And if you were that ugly and surgery didn't cure it, on the third try, you had to go to the ugly farm. So this lady, it was her third surgery. If it wasn't successful, she had to go to the ugly farm. So the doctor does the surgery, and they unwrap her. Now they're going to unwrap her. All movie, you haven't seen her face because they didn't want to show you how ugly she was. They didn't show the doctor's faces either, so you'd have a basis of comparison. They unwrap her face. There she is, this stunningly gorgeous actress, Kim Novak. Mm. And the doctors all scream, the nurse faints, and everybody says, oh, we're so sorry, the operation failed, you're still hideously ugly. And you're looking at this beautiful woman, you're thinking, hideously ugly. Then they show the doctor's faces, these pig snouts. And you're like, ah. Well, two years ago, uh, I was having some difficulties. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to always like to know more about what I've got than the doctor. So I thought, you know what? Now we've got this internet thing. And my wife had bought me a computer and got the internet hooked up. So I got on there and I typed in Sturge Weber. Bam! Found this thing called the Sturge Weber Foundation. Then they said they're having an international conference in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which you two went to. So I thought, I'm living in Marrittsville, Maryland, 50 miles away. I'll go to it. So I signed up, I went to it. So I walk into this room with three or four hundred people. And I thought I was in the twilight zone. I walked in and there are all these people with purple faces. Look at these people and I think, these are my people. <laughs> this is me. Somebody never told me. This is where I belong. These are my people. These people have what I have. We are part of the family. So ever since then, I found out they have a message board. You can write in and talk to all the other people. So I would look on the message board. Every month, somebody writes in. We just had a baby two months ago. Everything seemed fine, but now the doctor tells us our baby has Sturge Weber. What should we expect? Mm. When you tell them what to expect, you have to break the news to them gently. Every two or three weeks, somebody writes in. The doctor wants to remove half my baby's brain. What can I expect? There's this beautiful site that I found the other day. I've got the reference written down inside. And do you have a computer with an internet here? I could show it to you and my son has a laptop. We could hook it up and show it to people. There's this beautiful thing on YouTube. A young girl named Hannah has Sturge Weber. Just a little tiny red dot. Right here, just a tiny red dot. You would look at her and say, perfect kid, little red dot, no big deal. Doctor had to take half her brain out. And on YouTube, they show her in the hospital bed having a seizure. And the mother talks to her, and the baby just is staring off into space, has no idea what the mother's saying. I think the little girl was three. Then the next video is the little girl, three weeks later, outside, running around. This kid is up and running in three weeks. Every month I get on the net and I'm seeing all these kids have hemispherectomies and the parents are writing in to say it was the best thing we could have done for our child before the hemispherectomy, constant seizures, constant deterioration. Now, two weeks after the operation to remove half their brain, the kid is better than it had ever been in their life. And you're thinking, how is that possible? But it's all the medical doctors. The Sturge Weber Foundation has made a huge difference in my life. In my life, I'm already an old man by Sturge Weber comparisons. When you live into your 50s with Sturge Weber, you've done just fine. You can't ask for any more time. We've had all the years we need. The young kids, it's those that you have to pray for and try to find a way to give them more years. The Sturge Weber Foundation helps me because I have found other people like me, and I understand I'm not the only one. For years, I tried to find a cosmetic surgeon to take this purple off my nose. Nobody would touch me. Nobody would think about that procedure. So I gave up. After the first day in Harrisburg, I'm like, what am I complaining about? There are people who just look like nightmares. I have this little tiny defect. I'm a big crybaby wuss. I don't need cosmetic surgery. I don't need cosmetics to hide it. I've got it, I'm going to deal with it. So if people think I'm ugly, they think I'm ugly. No big deal. By the time you're 50 and if I had uh, three wives and 25, <laughs> that's another story. Uh, Sturge Weber, every young parent, when they find their kid has Sturge Weber, they have to have a support group. It's the Sturge Weber Foundation. 
I think that the Stuart Weber Foundation is on to something, and I think within the next two to three years, Sturge Weber will know the foundation will find the, cute, the cause of Sturge Weber. Then it's only a question of time till they find a cure for Sturge Weber, a cure for the seizures that's irrevocable and puts an end to it early on in life. For years, those of us who are old enough have seen something called the Jerry Lewis telethons. Mm -hmm. Has anybody seen this? I thought, that man's crazy. Now he was funny as a comedian, how in the heck are they ever going to find a cause for muscular dystrophy? I thought, it'll never happen. And if you all get the paper, this is a paper called Sun Sentinel. This was last Saturday's edition. Muscular dystrophy breakthrough reported. An experimental drug can effectively cure Duchenne muscular dystrophy in mice by correcting a genetic defect and allowing healthy muscles to develop Researchers reported this week in a paper published online by the journal Nature. I'm thinking to myself, why do they want to cure muscular dystrophy in mice? <laughs> but Jerry Lewis, if I look at the face, I'm thinking muscular dystrophy. Who's going to be remembered as the man who founded the cure for muscular dystrophy? It's Jerry Lewis. That's the man whose face I see behind it. You're old enough to remember a thing called polio. 50 years ago, just before I was, well, no, after I was born, there was a man who had a daughter who was affected by polio, infantile paralysis. His law partner and his best friend was a man named Franklin Delano Roosevelt, mm -hmm. who was healthy and athletic in his youth, got struck by polio, later became president notwithstanding. But we remember Roosevelt not as an athlete but as a president sitting in a wheelchair in every picture that we see him in. We don't remember him as a great athlete. We remember him only as a man affected by polio. But he developed polio as an adult. He was an athlete in his younger days and when he was a lawyer. But there was a man, uh, Basil Connor. His daughter had polio. His law partner had polio. And he thought, we gotta do something about this. We gotta do something. So he founded the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. He got all the donations together and came up with enough money to fund a young doctor, Jonas Salk. Salk came up with the cure. We always think of Jonas Salk as the man who cured polio and eradicated it from the United States of America. But Jonas Salk and Jerry Lewis, they didn't cure polio, they didn't cure muscular dystrophy. It was the tens of millions of American families that stood behind the families like Michael and Michelle, who have children affected by a disorder, put their money together, donated money, found the cure. That's why we're here tonight, to raise money for the Sturge Weber Foundation, to find a cure that will eliminate it for all future cases, and hopefully help the youngsters like their son Matthew, eliminate the seizures, and make their future lives a lot easier than mine has been. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Hello? Okay, we're going to go ahead and eat. We have the silent auction. There are still some lines that are empty, I hear. So you all need to bid, 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 so we can raise some more money. Go ahead and have some dinner. We'll, I think we'll close the auction maybe about 8.45. So have some more to drink, have something to eat, enjoy yourselves, and thank you again for being here. Richard has some more information. If you'd like to see him, he has some pictures and some additional uh, information. Thank you.